Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm bringing you a project where you can use gel printed backgrounds or painty papers, maybe things that have been sitting about for a while, and you can turn these into a little collage book. Now, I'm going to make most of the book all the way through, although I don't get the finishing touches done at the end. But here I've got a series of gel plate printed backgrounds. I said a little bit more about them in my vlog just on Saturday past. So, you know, they're, they're there. I'm just going to use some of them. I'm not using them all. Just showing you what I've got here. And I really just wanted a good selection. Now, I've put today's video at speed because there will be a lot of repetitive things. But what I'm going to do is to put some image transfers onto some of these pages. I'm going to use some collage items that I've had sitting about for a very long time and I know now that it's unlikely that I'm going to get round to using them in any way. Now what I also know at this point or at the point when I was about to start to do uh, transfers is that not all of them will work as transfers. But what it does do is to put some colour onto the images. So it changes it from a plain image to, in my opinion, something just a little bit more interesting because it adds colour to it. So in the end, what I'll do in this book is actually to have a book of transferred images to which I will also add some collage. So to begin with, I'm just going to show kind of at a slower pace, still still speeded up, but double speed, just what I'm doing to take the images. And I will let you see some of these as I pull them off. Now, this image at the bottom here, I've had this a few years now and I really like it. I know that it probably won't transfer, so that's absolutely fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm using fluid acrylics. I'll put them on in a reasonably thin coat, it won't be too thick. I'll put the image down, just place an old sheet on top of that. As soon as I lift the image, I'll know whether or not it's transferred. It didn't look like it there, so I'm just giving it another go but it didn't. But suddenly that image, in my opinion again, has transferred into something a little bit different. It's it's uh, just changed it a bit in a way that I might now be more inclined to use it. So again, fluid uh, acrylic paint down. I know that this one is likely to work because it's on a glossier paper. So I'm pretty confident about this one. So there I've got my image and all I'll do now is I will take one of my printed gel plate backgrounds and pull this up. I just move over it. I sometimes do a little check to see if it's lifting. But you know, sometimes depend on the magazine. Sometimes it takes longer to pull. Other times not so long. Sometimes you get the whole image pulled. Other times you don't. So here we go. Just going to do this now with a series of images and I'll probably speed this up even further just to get through it. But I'll make sure that you see the image in each case. That one, I was mainly doing faces, but that one, I just liked the pattern on, on the dress there. So I thought I'm going to use that because that will add some quite nice texture to a page. And you'll see there that it, it actually lifted quite well. Tends to be that images with the greater levels of contrast will give more interest when pulled. But both of those turned out. So I'll leave you for just a minute and then I'll come back when it comes to the next stage of making the book.
So now I'm taking a page that I had gel plate printed but I'm taking it and covering it right to the edge. So I wanted one page that was completely covered. Here I am now just looking through the various uh, image transfers, some better than others but all adding some interest to the page. Now the good thing about the way that I'm going to stru construct this book is that you will see a complete page at a time. So that image there, for example, we will see the whole thing as it is, not in two separate parts. And this is a good means if you have printed on, say, printer paper. The way I'm going to show you actually helps to make that paper nice and thick. Now, here are some of the pieces I used to try and print. Uh, some worked, some didn't, but they've got some colour on them, so I'm quite interested in, in using some of these. Some of these were from previous projects as well, not all used this time. Now what I'm going to do is I've taken 10 pages, I don't have them all here, but I'm, I'm cutting them down to 10 by 8, which is the size of my gel plate. So just cutting off those white borders. Obviously I could have gone round and coloured all them but it was easier just to cut them off. So I then put them in the order that I want them to run in my book and now I am simply folding each one in half so it's painted side in. So if you had painted papers and you weren't doing any images you still fold them in this way. Then using the bolt the bone folder or the bold folder to get a nice crisp fold into them. So next I want to start to glue pages together. So I've turned all my pages over there and I'm going to be starting at the back. So just got an old IKEA catalogue that I use just to capture glue rather than going through lots of pages of deli paper or whatever. So again, just making sure that I'm starting at the back. So I'm going to take the what might be described as the front side of that page, so not the actual back of it just now, and I am going to put glue all over this. And of course the handy thing about this particular glue is you can see where you have actually glued. Although it does start to dry in fairly quickly, but that's okay. So I've got my glue all over that. I'm then going to take my next page with the back of it and I'm going to get the kind of centre of that page, so the corner to the corner, and try and keep these in a straight line as possible. Using the roller there just to get good contact, so I'm just braring over it. Also just using a bone folder as well, just to get the contact right down the edges, including down that spine. If it's off a little bit, then there's ways I can straighten that at the end. So I'm doing the same again with the next page, and I'll do this all the way through until I've got to the very front page. So it's the same technique and these do make nice thick pages and they will get thicker still later on when I start to add more collage. Now once you've got all the pages together it would be quite good to put them some under something heavy for a little while just to make sure they're fully adhered otherwise you know, they can start to come apart as you're, you're playing through them, but I wanted to move on to get the project done. Now I'm going to attach the cover to it, and that's why I made this page a little bit bigger, because if there is any runoff, this is how we can deal with, with this. So just making sure, just positioning it, making sure that it's going to cover everything. And what I'll do here is I'll flip it over, I'm going to glue the back of my little book yeah I just decided to flip that over just so that I'm not getting glue onto the inside of the pages as far as possible it happens but again we can wipe over them and I'll now lay that down and again 
I'll push it down and make sure that it's fully secure. Now you can, if you want, put some glue along the spine. I don't find that necessary with this type. But again, I'm using the brayer and just ro ro rolling the brayer over the page to make sure it's fully adhered. Tripping over my words there. But I'm then going to do the exact same on it's upside down, but this is actually on the front page now and what will be the front cover. Just making sure that it looks neat and that I've not missed anything. And again, trying to get the two fully adhered and try to make sure that there's no wrinkles in it. Again, at this point, it'd be good to put it under something heavy, but I just continue. So now what I want to do is just to trim away the overhang. Obviously, you could make a book that did have a bit of overhang. But again, since this is a single sheet of paper, I'm just going to trim it more or less up to the edge of the book. And I think all I used for this was a ruler and my rotary tool but obviously you can use scissors if there is any overhang here then this is a good time just to or you know if there's any uh, if any of the pages aren't quite in the right position this is a good time just to even them up as well and some nice neat edges there just opening them just to make sure there's no glue got stuck inside just having a quick look have to be careful there because there's a danger sometimes of pulling the collage away from the page but there was in fact two pages there that just kind of stuck a little bit. So now I'm going to go through these other images and I'm going to start to look to add these as collage elements. And you would see that some of the pages have quite clear image transfers on them and others not so much. I like that one. Uh, it didn't transfer, so that was one I was definitely going to use the as a piece of collage. And I think just having added some colour to these, it just changes the image and just gives them a different feel. A bit grungier, I suppose, in a way. So again, I'll speed the video up here because the process of gluing down is very repetitive, but I'll let you see a bit of what I'm doing and then again I'll come back in at the next stage.
So now I'm going through my book to add some stenciling. I'm using here a number of different stencils from PM Artist Studio. Uh, I'll leave a link to their channel, to their website and shop below. I can't remember the names of all the ones that I've used, but if there's something in particular that uh, you want the name of, then do let me know. But all I'm using is some white gesso and some black gesso to put these down. And note that lid on the bottom kind of right hand side because I'm going to use something from in that in just a moment. So yeah, this is all about adding interest through the book. In some instances I'll use the stencils to fill in some blank spots and in other places I actually stencil on top of some of the images. So very much all about adding interest. I keep it to the two colours or to black and white anyway, but you know, at some point I might go back through and add some more colours. So here I am actually going to add some black gesso on top of this collaged face. As I say, it just adds some interest. So next what I do is I take that blob of gesso that was sitting in the top of that lid, I've pulled it out and I just glue it down. Now in this instance I used some uh, medium to actually glue it, glue it in place because I didn't think that the glue stick would be enough. I've used gloss medium because that's what I had to hand and I just thought that added a bit of interest to it. Now what I'm going to do is to come in and do some mark making and doodling. Mainly using a white pen, I think I maybe used a black pen in a couple of places, but by and large that's what I went through and did some mark making and doodling with. Again, I'll speed this up a bit further uh, because it is it's repetitive, although working on different pages it just shows you something different. All in all, I mean this is a fairly short video for me, all in all to get to this point, or at least I'll show you a flip through of where it's at so far, I think I spent about three and a half hours, so that excludes printing the gel plate printed backgrounds, but everything else, it was about three hours in terms of the construction, doing the image transfers, putting it all together, adding the additional collage, stenciling, etc. I will do more in this book. I would like to add some words to it. I'd like to do some more mark making in it, but I just got to the point in the day where I just needed to say I think that's enough for this video because I've got a lot of editing to do. But this was a lot of fun. It's a great way to use up uh, gel printed papers if you've got a lot of them sitting or painty papers. You can just add collage. You don't need to do the image transfers. You can just go in, make marks, doodle or whatever. So I do hope you've enjoyed seeing how I brought this together. I will do a flip through at some point in the future just to show where it has ended up. But meantime, here's a quick flip coming up. Thanks for watching. Do take care. Bye for now. Thank you.